you you generally use a stand-in for your plate that's the same dimensions uh, for a dry run before every exposure so that if anything messes up it messes up on a piece of cardboard instead of an expensive plate well I use my trusty ridiculously strong magnets yeah and I put everything like this uh, and well to the uh, this is how you're gonna see it like from the perspective of the sheet of cardboard so you know just composing your shot if you're a photographer I guess. now you put it down in front of the laser and this has to be at an angle so that uh, so that you're actually able to view the hologram. If it's just straight, the only thing you'll ever be able to see from the hologram is a bunch of glare from the sun or whatever flashlight or light source you're using. The first thing about exposing a hologram is that vibrations are not your friends. I have to go down here. I'm a few blocks of the away from the highway. So I need to be down here at two in the morning doing this so that there aren't any cars or semis or anything. To avoid any vibra unwanted vibrations from myself, I need to lay on this and my shutter, in which, you know, again, is so I don't have to do this. My shutter cannot be touching anything else. And and after I'm done with everything, I have to leave, uh, everything, the laser has to be on, the shutter has to be in front of it, I have to wait here for two minutes. It can take a lot longer to settle if the furnace is going. When you expose it, you want to uh, make the least amount of vibrations possible again. Uh, you slowly move the shutter out of the way, exposing the hologram. You leave it there for open, well, you leave the beam not interrupted for 15 seconds in my, well, in my case. And I slowly put it back in front, or put the shutter back in front of the laser. Then, you have to sneak up behind the laser, put your hand in front of it so that it doesn't get on the hologram, and unplug it. You know, or you might have a different setup, so... And then the plate would be exposed. Okay. So, dark room for holograms. It's pretty much the same as a photographic dark room. You know, you use the same thing. Except you get a... a safe light that is preferably blue or green instead of red. You make sure that the red safe light is off, and uh, if you know how to do photogra you know, photographic darkroom stuff, this is easy. First, you mix your two parts of developer together, and mix them. If it turns a urine color, it has been too long, and you need to replace it. Um, then you pour the bleach in this one, and distilled water in this one. I always do it developer bleach water, but that's only because the sink is over here. Uh, then you dip, uh, well, you turn out the lights, I'm sure, over that way. You get, uh, get the hologram or the holographic plates, which are in a bag, in a bag, in a bag. Well, in a box, in a bag, in a bag. You take that out. Ah, stupid mouse trap. Uh, you take the hologram out when the door, after turning out the light. Again, you know, don't forget that, or else. Anyway, uh, then you dip it in the distilled water for ten seconds. And then you have your hologram. Then you dip it 
well, make sure you have gloves on, then dip it in the developer for 20 seconds, then in the distilled water again for up to three minutes, but I usually get impatient around two minutes, so, you know, it becomes less critical after about 20 seconds, you know, it doesn't matter all that much. Get rid of this in the sink, which is there. Then you uh, dip it, well, yeah, replace the water. Yeah. <laughs> um, then you dip it in the bleach for 20 seconds or until it gets clear, which is usually around the same. Then in the distilled water again for up to three minutes, you know, as you're impatient, whatever. Um, then you dump this and replace it with form of flow, which I refer to as death of flow, but that's only so that stupid people won't drink it because it's some crazy form of alcohol that prevents the uh, water from beating on the surface of the hologram, which makes it have less or fewer water spots that, you know, yeah, water spots are bad. Um, this is also good, the dark room you know, is also a good place to store the holographic plates because it's dark most of the time and uh, you can use your bathroom if you want to, you know, just, well, they're the same pretty, well, not the same, but it's usually easy to make a bathroom dark because nobody wants their, themselves to be watched when they're using the bathroom. The bathroom has running water, like a dark room, and the safe light is pretty portable. Unless you have a giant... You know, that has to be dim, so there's no reason to have a big one. Um, yeah, I guess this is the dark room, or... You know, you know. Fun, or else. This is the hologram that turned out really well recently. Uh, it's of a cat. I'm using my laser to uh, to illuminate it because it shows up slightly better than in normal light. And you know, cameras hate me, so I don't know. <coughs> it has to be. The hologram has to be illuminated from the same angle as the uh, as the original exposure, like on the on the table. And uh, well, this one turned out really well, so I thought I'd show you. Now, to obtain the holographic plates, I would recommend using the best technology that 1980s has to offer. Well, early 90s, I guess, has to offer. The internet. <coughs> we. Ah. I found mine on a website called integraph.com. I n t e g r a f. And you know, they sell them for a hundred dollars for thirty, and you know, they seem to work. Having a helper is generally very useful when you're making holograms. Uh, often they can be bribed with food and or time in videos that you happen to be making. Uh, if you're only interested in educating yourself or knowing about holograms, you might as well turn off now. Here he is! I told them not to drink it all. They said they'd leave me some honey and they didn't. It's all gone. They drank it. I knew they 